<laughs> so, uh, Lieutenant Dan, we're here at the uh, Joe Miyoki thing, and it's great Sorry. to see you out here today. What were you doing today? Uh, we just came to one say thank you to all the folks that work so hard on our campaign and on so many campaigns you know, across the state and just to have an opportunity to update people about what's going on in Raleigh and what we're doing, some of the things that we're working on and you know, just encourage people to keep going because uh, you never really can slow down. There's no such thing as an off election year in, in this day and age and we need everybody out there to keep fighting. Absolutely, and uh, you've been doing a lot of work with uh, Common Core. I was wondering if you could just give us a you know brief little rundown of what ha what is happening up there with that. Uh, well, you know, we're, we we started the process a couple months ago of asking questions uh, to the Department of Public Instruction about what's going on related to Common Core, and uh, we sent about 67 questions to the Department of Public Instruction, and we got a, a mountain of information back about 40,000 pages with no answers at all to any of our questions, and so we're still asking questions, we're still diving in and trying to figure out what's going on. But through this process of, of getting uh, exposure through asking these questions, we've had a lot of people coming to us and, and sharing information to us. So we have more and more concerns every single day, uh, whether that's from teachers that are saying they're not prepared uh, to uh, deliver Common Core right now, whether that's uh, from parents who are saying we don't know what this is about, this was kind of snuck in under the radar, uh, whether this is uh, from teachers that are saying, you know, this math curriculum is not nearly as strong as the last math curriculum we had. In fact, it doesn't make any sense of how it's being delivered. So there's question after question after question. You know, I sit on the state state board of education, and uh, we have opportunities to continue to ask these questions in front of DPI and the board. But what we want to make sure of is, as we took that those 67 questions, we sent them out to every school district in North Carolina. We sent them to every um, county commission uh, group in North Carolina as well, saying these are the things we've asked. These are the things that we believe you need to be aware of because Common Core right now is being implemented in the state of North Carolina, and there's going to be ramifications to it down the road. We want to make sure that you're aware of those things. So we can continue to ask questions, we continue to, to stay out front of it. Very good. And another uh, hot button issue, uh, I think, with the Tea Party is the uh, toll roads. Do you know of any uh, updates on that? And uh, what is what is your position on the uh, toll roads themselves? Uh, well, on, you know, for two and a half years on the campaign trail, I was asked this question a lot. I've always been against toll roads. I've never been in favor of a toll road before. I think that, you know, we go back in North Carolina and start looking at our history of how money has been spent on roads, how gas tax has been increased through the years, how we've had a highway fund and a highway trust fund that for uh, decades literally were robbed by the politicians in Raleigh to put the money into the general fund to balance the budget. And so because all of a sudden we get to a place where uh, we don't have money for some of the roads that we need and some of the repairs that we need and those types of things, we say, you know where we're going to institute another tax on the people in North Carolina. We're going to call it a toll road and we can get it built quickly and, and those types of things. You know, absolutely you can get the road built faster, but when you have been irresponsible for a number of decades with the people's money, there are consequences to that irresponsibility. And one of those consequences is you don't have the money to spend as quickly as possible. You know, we have to get back to taking our trust fund money and putting it in the hands of people we can trust. You know, I always say, get it out of the hands of politicians, put it in the hands of people you can trust. And so that's what a trust fund is there for. It's there to be built up over time. It's there to be used in the long run for a rain, kind of a rainy day fund. And if we had done that, in North Carolina and we hadn't robbed those funds, we would have had enough money in all of those accounts to build all new roads, to pave all existing roads, and to fix all our bridges. Uh, so really it's a mismanagement issue and it's uh, not necessarily on the current Republicans that are in there right now. I mean, they have changed those laws. You can't take the money out of those funds anymore. They have set that straight so those funds can build themselves up. But, you know, sometimes you have to feel the pain and uh, sometimes that means you don't get all the roads built when you want them built and you don't get all the things done that you want to have done in that timely fashion. But that's what the situation we're in now. Hey man, very good. And uh, what is uh, the next big thing up on your plate? And uh, and you know, in closing, just let us know how we uh, people can support you, uh, contact you, and uh, maybe reach out to you if they have an issue. Yeah, well, uh, we have three things that we work on. We call them the three E's. One is education. We talked about Common Core a little bit. We're going to get put together a, uh, some policy issues for education coming up that we can start to address in upcoming general assemblies. So you'll hear more of us, uh, more of a vision about education coming up real soon. Uh, we also uh, take care of uh, energy in North Carolina. I was just a uh, um, uh, made the chair of the Energy Policy Council in North Carolina. So we're going to start crafting a long-term, sound, viable energy policy for our state. that We've never had one before. So we're, we're going to be uh, working on that and we're always working on the economy. We're always trying to find ways to make sure that we're doing the right thing in our state to get people back to work. And the main way you do that is by getting the government off the backs of the people, by getting regulations off the backs of the people, and by allowing companies to do what they do, invest, uh, hire people, and continue to innovate. So. 
uh, those are things that are always on the forefront of what we're doing in Raleigh. And if you want to get a hold of us, just Google us. Best way is just Dan Forrest, Lieutenant Governor, and Google. You can find our all of our websites. You can find our government website. You can find our Facebook and Twitter sites. You can uh, find our campaign sites. It's all out there. Very good. Thank you so much, yeah, sir. Thank you. Excellent. 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 Hey.